Amen. Well, I guess a couple of things real quick. I forgot to highlight these. Jake, did you hit these? Okay. Um, I just want to make sure they get covered. So January 20... No, let's see. February 6th, we're going to start our uh, World Harvest School again. So when are we starting that? So feel free to sign, <clears throat> contact the office or online, and you can sign up for those classes. The Supernatural School, that's always a really fun, powerful time. You'll start to encounter God like never before. Amen? It's really a great time. And then also the, the uh, Potential Cell Leader Training School is also during that same time. And one way or another, God is going to stretch you and bring you to another level. Cupid Care, this is good. Uh, Sam and Caitlin um, have, are putting this on Friday, February 15th, not the 14th, but the when? The 15th. Parents can drop off kids one year old to sixth grade at the church where they will enjoy fun and food while the parents go out for a date. Wow. Can I drop my kids off? If they want to help. If they want to help. <laughs> All right. Pregnancy Health Center bottles. Hey, let's get behind this. Let's try to really outdo what we've done before. How many believe that people should uh, choose adoption over abortion? Yeah. Amen. Right now, New York is celebrating, I believe they have the highest uh, murder rate, I'm sorry, abortion rate in the United States. And they are celebrating because they signed a new law that I believe it's, it's full term now, right? Isn't that what it is? And um, these people are real people that God created, so we, we, it's not good to hate them. Let's pray that God convicts them, and let's pray that God would turn this back around. Amen? That's the heart of God. God loves them, even in the midst of this, and we need to pray that God would move and break this thing. Amen? And now, the, the other side of the coin is this. Is a, where is it? Um, Indiana? Was it Indiana? Ohio? That just signed? The what? Yes. And they're, they're starting to outlaw. They're going the opposite with abortion. Isn't that amazing? And then I read another article about another state, and this one I think was Indiana, uh, that is implementing biblical teaching back into the school systems, and they're hanging up banners in all the public schools that say, one nation under God. So tell me things can't turn. That's right. So I can't wait until we see God turn New York upside down and where we have the biggest revivals in the world in New York City. Instead of them celebrating death, they'll begin to celebrate life. All right, so let's get behind the Pregnancy Health Center. Let's really do a good job on that. Five bucks here and there is going to change their life, but it's not really going to change ours. So let's, let's get behind that. Bulletins, check your bulletins for more important information than what's happening at World Harvest. Amen. All right. Are you guys ready? All right. I'd like you to turn in your Bible somewhere. Let's see if you can hear from God. All right. All right. Are you ready? Are you there yet? You there? Okay. Well, you can hear from God. He's very prophetic. Ginger, you're prophetic, aren't you? Where are we at? We're, we're, we're in Mark 9. Mark 9. Mark, oh, look at that. Woo! Wow. We should be in a magazine. All right, let's go to Mark 9. And I want to open up some things. We've, we've been singing this song, Just Say Yes. And my message has a lot to do with just saying yes. Yes, but also that in the yes is all the provision for your calling. When you say yes and you come into alignment with the yes of heaven, the Bible says the promises, uh, promises of God are yea and amen. In other words, the promises of God are, number one, they're from heaven and they're saying, I promise to do this, but he needs a response from you. 
that says, I come into agreement with that. The promises of God are yes and amen. And when we come into agreement with Him, things begin to happen. And, and when we say yes to God, God always has the provision for everything you need in that yes. Is that true? When Mary said yes to the angel, remember that? Were you guys there? When she said yes to God, God began to give all the provision he needed to see Christ born, Christ protected. The family, they, they left, they went to Egypt, they, all these things, all the provision that was needed was through the yes of Mary. When we come into agreement with heaven, all that is needed, all the provision that is needed for you to fulfill what God's calling you to do is already released when we agree with heaven. All right, so let's have some fun. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so this is chapter 9. I don't have time to read the whole thing, but it talks about a boy being healed. <clears throat> and the devil can really put on a show sometime, sometimes. Uh, how many have ever been under attack? You're like, wow, I'm so on fire for God. Next thing you know, you lose your job. You know, your car's on fire. Uh, I don't know, you know. Your landlord sells the house. Who knows? But, you know, it's a mess. And sometimes when, when you're that close from a breakthrough, sometimes the devil will really show off. And he's trying to scare you to step back or bring you under oppression to cause you to lay back. Amen? So... Here's a story where this boy needs to be healed, and the devil throws this child down. He's foaming at the mouth, and uh, he's flopping on the ground like a crappie. Have you ever been ice fishing? And the devil's putting on a real show here, and the father loses all his faith. You ever been there? I've been there. You know, you think you know the word, you've encountered God, you've seen miracles. But something dynamic, dramatic happens, and it's like you lose all your faith. You ever been there? And then he starts saying, why, God? Why did you call me into something that I can't fulfill? What a dumb statement, by the way. We need to look at life in its entirety, not in one day. That's one of the great secrets to life. Look at Joseph. Remember Joseph? You're going to, even your brothers are going to bow down to you. The world's going to bow down to you, basically. Well, if he looked just at one day, he'd say, God is a liar. Right? And then he's beat up, he's thrown into a pit. God's a liar. Well, he's sold into slavery. God's a liar. Well, then he gets sold into, he's brought into Potiphar's house. Remember this, Joseph? There he is, serving well. He starts to advance. Potiphar's wife makes advances on him. He gets thrown into prison because he won't go through with things. It doesn't look like God is telling the truth here, right? But soon enough, as he's faithful with God and he extends faith even through the questions, he never empowered the question. That's the secret of Joseph. He never empowered the question. And Satan wants you to question the call of God. He wants you to question God's purpose for your life. But Joseph never empowered that question. And it says he stayed faithful until one day, we know the whole thing of the dreams, he interpreted dreams, and one day one of them remembered and told Pharaoh. Pharaoh comes and brings him in. He interprets the dream and God puts him over, second in command over the whole nation. If he looked at one day, he'd say, God's a liar. He's not true. His provision isn't perfect. But he was faithful through the questions, and at the end, God promoted him. I need an amen. amen. So here it is. The devil throws a fit, throws him down. The father loses faith in Mark 9. And we see this famous statement here. I'd like you to look in verse 23. <clears throat> um. This is after the devil has thrown this kid down, all this stuff, the calamity, the fear, all those things. 
It's like a scene from the, you know, The Exorcist. How many love that movie? Just kidding. Uh, I seen that when I was uh, probably 16 years old. I don't think I slept for like a month. It was about the same time I watched Jaws and wouldn't ski anymore. Um, it was not wise. It was a dumb thing to do. Anyways, verse 23 here, it says this. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, say that, if you can believe, I'd like you to personalize this. I'd like you to say, if I can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So I'd like you to, again, I want you to personalize this. Say, I can believe all things are possible for me because I believe. I believe. Now, look at your neighbor and say, I believe. Now look at your other neighbor and say, quit the doubting. This is a powerful verse. If we truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He's God incarnate in the flesh, He is God, is He God? The words here are in red, that means the words of the Christ, the anointed one, the one that had no sin, the one that had all wisdom, all knowledge, all insight, and he's telling you this, if you can believe, all things are possible. But somewhere in your life, you ran into a problem. Somebody said something. You looked silly. You, you tried to step out, but we didn't have wisdom. And we began to doubt God, and we began to limit God. You watched a movie, you heard something, you felt shame, and we began to doubt God. Has anybody ever been there? <laughs> I've never been there. <laughs> so we all have these encounters with God, but we all have disappointing stories as well. And when we go through those times like Joseph, we need to step back and see that the world is bigger than my understanding. I need to trust him in the storm that at the end of the storm, it'll all make sense and I'll come through this thing. Remember Paul, when he was called to evangelize the world, and here he is, he's beat up a few times, but he doesn't give up because he knows right around the corner, he's going to win another city to Christ. Another time they stone him. How many have been stoned? I'm just kidding. I mean, hit with rocks. We had some 60s people raise their hands, so I don't know. He doesn't give up. He gets up, he wins the next city to Christ. This is amazing. All right, I'm going to share some fun things with you tonight that hopefully is going to open up your faith. Paul is in a storm for several days out on the ocean. How many have ever been in a storm in the ocean? I have. It's not a lot of fun. We were in the Caribbean one time in, in the, the water. We, we get out there quite a ways in this 50-foot yacht thing. And the captain comes down. He tells us, he goes, you know, I guess we shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have pushed off from shore. All the other crafts decided not to go out today. I thought, why did you tell me that? I had confidence in this guy until that point. And some other lady, she's there, she's throwing up in a bucket, and yeah, it was a bad day. <laughs> we finally made it to shore, and, and it, was, it was not good. It was not good. But Paul was in that storm, and it said, for several days, and he began to call upon the Lord, and the Bible says an angel appeared to him and spoke to him, and he encouraged him to have faith and trust God. And he gave him instructions, and he went to the captain, and he said, if you do what I say, he said, not one person will die, and everyone will be spared. And it happened just like the angel said. We have to quit empowering the storm. The purpose of the storm is to detract, to pull you out of God's purpose, and to waste your life. There is wonderful, powerful Christian men, Christian athletes, Christian men and women, and I'm going to get into a couple of those in just a minute, 
but they had some terrible storms happen to them, and they were leading the masses with their testimony, and something bad happened. Next thing you know, they disappear for 10 years. And they said they wasted all those years because they empowered a storm. How many can relate to that? We get our feelings hurt. We, we don't understand. And then if we would just hold on until the breaking of dawn, we'd see that life is different. Amen? All right, so let's get into this. We see that Jesus prays for this, this son, and he's completely set free. And uh, they're all shocked and amazed. So here's the thing. If we empower disappointments, we will hinder the gift of God on your life. Every single one of us are called to do something for God. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. Every one of you are chosen of God, handpicked by God, and you're placed in your workplace, in your home, in your community. It is the will of God right now. Instead of always looking to the rainbow... We need to sometimes look and say, God, I need to bloom where I'm planted. I need to fulfill my purpose here so I can move on to other places. Amen? It's funny, I've talked to people that keep having these terrible jobs and, and they keep getting put in these situations with people they don't like. And finally they wake up one day and they're like, oh, this is a mission field. I never looked at it like that. And they start winning all their friends to the Lord. And when people start getting saved, they, they love this guy, then God promotes them to another place to do the same thing. Amen? We need to understand that God is super involved in our life. So Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are what? Possible. In other words, if we can believe and we can co-labor with God, if we can come into His will and believe Him and trust Him, he will provide everything we need for this journey if we trust Him. How many have said yes to God? All right, this applies to you. Sean Boltz. How many know Sean Boltz? How many have heard of him? He's a famous prophet guy. Uh, I've met him. Um, uh, I don't know him well. I know Jeremy and Miranda Nelson. How many remember them guys? We used to bring them up here all the time. Wonderful uh, ministers. Uh, Jeremy had a baseball contract, and at the last minute, the Holy Spirit called him into full-time ministry, walked away, and, and uh, God has taken care of him all these years. So Sean Boltz, he was uh, traveling around, and he ends up going to this, this uh, Christian meeting for professional athletes, and there were Olympic gold medalists there. There were hundreds of people from uh, basketball to anything you can imagine and he's there and he's preaching he said Lord what can I do to inspire these people and, and open up faith so he's up there preaching and and then all of a sudden he gets this thought and it comes over him and he realizes that sometimes these athletes get hurt and even though they get hurt God has still called them to fulfill certain things in their life but whether it's a blown limb or financial things, whatever it is. And he, he says at the end of his talk, he says, if there are people here that feel like there is something prohibiting you from fulfilling your call, I'd like you to stand up. And a whole bunch of people stood up. So he prays for them. And all of a sudden, the power of the Spirit of God comes upon him. And he's standing there before all these athletes, and he gets really bold. And he said, now I want to know how many people have had metal in your body, you have a torn shoulder, you have a blown out knee, something that is preventing you when you know God has called you to go to the Olympics or something great, and you have this problem that has happened that is holding you back. I want you to stand up. And 20 people stood up in that crowd. He asked them to come forward, and here they are, they all come forward, and uh, he's just flowing with God. He said, now how many of you have metal? Nine people had metal in their bodies. That's pretty awesome. They come forward. Fourteen of them had torn issues in their body. Fourteen out of that crowd was instantly healed when he prayed a general prayer, a simple prayer, but it didn't happen until he made this statement. It didn't happen until he made this statement. He didn't say a magic prayer. 
He didn't throw oil on them. You ever see the guy that throws oil on everyone? That's the way Brian prays for people. He's just, you know. Here's what he said. You ready? This is worth the drive here tonight. Are you ready? After he made this statement, he just leaned upon the Lord to fulfill this, this simple truth. And as they stood there, they began to cry, and they felt the presence of God come upon them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one of their testimonies with you in just a moment. Because this is authentic, and this happened, and it's documented. He said this, If you have a destiny, then there is a provision from God to fulfill, fulfill that destiny. If you have a destiny, then there is a provision from God to fulfill that destiny. Healing, financing, whatever the barrier is, God has a provision so you can fulfill your destiny. And he said this, You have the right to ask God with authority as a son in the kingdom of God to ask and believe God for whatever it is you need to fulfill your destiny calling because you didn't call yourself God did and in the calling is the provision to fulfill what he's assigned you to do remember Moses he was called to, to Egypt he's the Bible says that he couldn't speak well he could st he stuttered or whatever but in his yes God provided a Joshua it didn't get him off the hook. Amen? In the calling is the provision for you to fulfill what God called you to do. I want you to get this in your spirit. This is so powerful. So there they are. The power of God comes on these people. And metal, I think it was nine people, miraculously, the crowd went crazy. The people went nuts. It just happened in the presence of God. Athletes went back to basketball, went back to the Olympics, and participated in what others said was impossible but not for God. I need an amen to that. One of the people there was a lady by the name of Kelly Clark. Who was Kelly Clark? I'll tell you who she was because you're asking. You guys okay? You doing all right? If you get done before I do, just sneak out the back. Here's Kelly Clark, 2002 Olympics. She's a young girl, and in 1998, she watches the Olympics, and she's a snowboarder. There she is. She's watching the Olympics on TV. She records all of the snor snor snorboarding, snowboarding <laughs> Olympics on TV and uses a huge machine called a VCR to record every scene. And she watches those over and over and over. She's a non-Christian girl. She's from Canada. And she's watching this, and inspiration fills her. And she said now she knows it was the call of God before she was even a Christian. <sighs> she goes with everything in her heart. She starts working out. She goes to the 2000 Olympics, and she wins the gold as a very young girl. And they said she has done the impossible. This is before she was prayed for. 2002. How many watched the 2002 Olympics? All right? Here's the thing. She gets done with the Olympics. She wins gold. Everybody knows her name in the entire world. She is famous. And she goes to her room after receiving the gold medal. She goes to her chalet, and she goes, well, let me back up. She gets the gold medal, and she's holding it, and there was another girl that was disappointed. I think she didn't win. And a girl walks up to her, this other girl, and she says, you need to stop being so disappointed, honey. You need to know that God loves you. God has a plan for your life, and I want to pray for you because God can turn this around. She's ministering to her, but Kelly Clark is a few feet away and hears every word. Kelly Clark goes to her room that night, and she contemplates whether life is worth living. She just won the gold medal. She should be the happiest person on the planet. She writes in her journal and she says this, if I don't wake up tomorrow, what difference does it make? 
There she is, Kelly Clark, one of the youngest snowboarding gold medalists ever. She was the first one to win the gold on U.S. soil in snowboarding. That's a, quite an accomplish, accomplishment, something like that. One of those. God, you said if I do your will, you'd give me provision. Let me speed. <laughs> this is good. Are you guys awake? Yeah. Okay. She's sitting there, and she's like, I don't even care if I live. Maybe I'll just go end it. These are thoughts she had after winning the gold medal. Why? Because life without God is empty. Just watch a Hollywood actor for a while. Emptiness magnified and sterilized and doped to try to find something. Right? Anyways, so she's sitting in a room and she's contemplating these things and all of a sudden she recalls that woman, that girl, praying for that other girl. She remembers her name. She runs. She gets the, the hotel room that she's staying in. She knocks on her door and in the wee hours of the morning. She knocks on the door and she says this, Hi, I'm Kelly Clark. And the girl's like, I know who you are. And she said, I heard you tell that girl about Jesus. And she says, I am empty, and I need to know, does God love me too? She poured her heart out to her. The girl prayed for her. Six months later, now for that time, she's reading the Bible. She's trying to find God. That was the starting point. Six months later, I think it's in July of that year, 2003, I think it was, 2003, no, 2002, she fully gives her heart to Jesus Christ. Amen? She goes on, and she goes to the next Olympics, which she went through the 2002 Olympics. She won a gold and two bronzes. That's pretty good for a young girl. Uh, then she goes on to the Poignang Chang, is that what it is? Olympics? Yeah, that one. She gets fourth place. That's not so bad. Then she goes on to the Soki Olympics, whatever it is, 2014. She, what? Yeah, I like ketchup with that. <laughs> she gets a bronze medal. Now she's getting a little bit older. It's her third Olympics. No one in that category ever has gone to a fourth Olympics. She is saved, and she feels compelled to God, by God now to keep going because the Lord said that I'm going to use you, I'm going to put you on a platform to spread the love of God wherever she goes. And God will give her a platform so she can share her testimony and give hope wherever she goes. So she's sitting there one day and she said, Lord, I think I would like to try out again. I just want to try one more time. And the Lord speaks to her in her room at her desk, and he says, is that what you want? And she was startled by the voice of God. She'd read the Bible, but now the voice of God comes alive to her. And she says, no, God, what I would really like to do is I'd like to win one more time, or at least place. And the Lord says, that's good enough for me. Write it down. I'll give you the provision. So she goes out. She starts working out like never before. She goes, and she contends. And what does she do? In 2010, I think it was, no, in 2014, she wins the bronze medal. This is impossible at her age. Oh, 2010, she's going to go again. She blows her knee out, and she's severely injured. She goes to a Bethel conference in California in Reading. She gets crazy healed in a meeting. She goes on, and she wins the 2010, not wins, but she wins the, the bronze again in the 2010 Olympics after being healed. They said there's no way for her to contend. She gets up, no pain, no discomfort, nothing, and she wins a bronze. There's always provision for the calling that God has called you to do. Maybe God's called you to be a light at work. Then he'll give you the words to say if you'll just step out. Then she went to this meeting after getting injured again. She goes to the Sean Bolts meeting, and she stands up there. He prays for them, and again, God dramatically heals her body. She contends again, and then she goes into the Olympics 
for the last, uh, she goes to 2002, 2006, 2010, 2014, 2018 Olympics. Um, I think that was her last, I think it was 2018. I think she was on that team as well. I thought I had the, her placement there. Yeah, she, in 2002, she won the gold. In 2018, here it is, she got fourth place last year. She's won the X Games two, three times. That's pretty good for a little girl that didn't think she could do anything. But the power of God came upon her, spoke to her, called her. China gets a hold of her. You guys awake? Who got a hold of her? They said, we need your kind of inspiration to come to our nation and speak to our athletes. <laughs> she said, do you know what my inspiration is? And they said, whatever, we need what you have. She said, my story is going to be all about Jesus and his provision to fulfill what God has for you. They said, we want what you have. This is what the Chinese government told her over the sports area. They said, there's not enough faith in Christianity in our nation anyways. We need some hope. They bring her in, and over three, I think it was 300 athletes instantly gave their heart to Jesus in that meeting. A little Canadian girl that gets saved, gets filled with God, gets filled with a commission of God, and now everywhere she goes, she's giving talks now, she's going everywhere, sharing her faith about Jesus Christ. No holds barred. She just tells it the way it happened. Is anybody awake? So let me just give you a couple more thoughts here. You guys okay? Is this all right? Yeah, God is good. Here's some thoughts that she had. She gave a recent talk to a number of Christians, Christian leaders, and she gave a talk, and she talked about fear and how fear is a force that even though you have Almighty God that has placed an individual call on every person, that the devil wants to paralyze you with fear so you never amount to anything but being average. We're always afraid to write that book. We're always afraid to write the poem. We're always afraid to write the song. We're always afraid to go to the distance because we're afraid that we don't have what it takes. I just read the story of a man that was in college. He dropped out of college because he published a book. Nobody thought he could do it. He wrote a manual on how to publish a book. Everybody liked it. So he turned it into a book. He puts it out on Amazon. He becomes the number one best-selling book in publishing that year, he makes 8000 a month. He goes on three or four years later, and he turns that into a school online, and he's now worth $3.2 million. And everybody called him ignorant and stupid in school. Anybody awake? All right. Proverbs, go there real quick. I need to get to the point here. Proverbs. Are you guys okay? You guys all right? (laughs) Shandai. We need to know that God is with us. Did you know while you turn there, Proverbs 18, 16? 18, 16. Proverbs 18, 16. Did you know God called me to the ministry at a young age? And when I was 17, I fully gave my heart to the Lord. And I had a number of really bad attempts on my life. One of the times I fell asleep behind the wheel... But I knew God was with me. I fell asleep behind the wheel. I went off a huge hill, hill, big hill, big cliff. You know, you look down and it's, you know, the trees are that big down there. I rolled the car over and over and over, probably five, six times. I went end over end at least three to four times. And I wedged the car between two oak trees. I tore two tires off of that car. Glass, every window was shattered. The whole car was bent up and twisted. That's a mess. When I went off the road, I yelled the name of Jesus. Something grabbed me and held me in my seat. I had no seatbelt on. And even though I demolished that car, and there it sat smoking on its side, 
two tires ripped off, all the glass is blown out. I never had one scratch. I never had one bruise, and my hair wasn't even messed up. Thank God. <laughs> you see, God taught me right there and then that I need to value the call of God in my life. That I'm not just some guy that was out there. I am handpicked by God. I'd like you to say this. I am handpicked by God. I have the provision to fulfill my calling. All right. Proverbs 18, 16 says this. A man's gift makes room for him and puts him before great men. That's a word from God to you. A man's gift makes room for himself and puts him before great men. Men, if you trust him and if you are willing to wait like Joseph, God will interact in your life and do the miraculous. He'll train you. He'll prepare you. It might be a battle. It might take some work to read some books. You might have to study. You might have to work out. You might have to do some things besides watch TV. Amen? But if you do the work and you co-labor with God, it says this, a man's gift makes room for him and puts him before great Men. Wow. I was a shy kid when I was young, and uh, I didn't like to be in front of a crowd. I never wanted to speak in front of anyone. I would, I would stutter. I would, just, I would just get nervous, you know. My mind would lock up. <sighs> I started receiving prayer for that. I started to loosen up a little bit. I got into college. My first message I ever gave, I didn't prepare like the man told me to. I thought you just got up and, you know, they make it look easy. I got up there, and I stammered and stuttered and froze, and I was so embarrassed, all I wanted to do is go jump off a cliff somewhere. And finally, at the end, I said, oh, God, you got to help me. In the inside, on the outside, I was like this. And the Lord said this. He said, look at the crowd and say this, press in. I stopped, and I said, oh, my God. I said, God has a word for this crowd, the college auditorium there. I said, God himself is here, and he is telling you today, press in. And I went like that, and people got out of their seats, ran to the altar, rededicated their lives to Jesus. The band came up. Crazy things were happening. I was so embarrassed because it was just a God thing. On the inside, I knew I didn't know nothing Next thing, you know, the next month, my picture is on the front of the magazine, the prophet of God. <laughs> I thought, they have no idea. <laughs> I wasn't choking up with emotion. I wasn't feeling the anointing. I was embarrassed. And God gave me provision for my calling, amen, and gave me two words pressed in. And the whole I don't know if they all came, but I'd say 90% of them came running to the altar, filled the altar, bawled their eyes out, and they sustained those meet that meeting for quite some time because people were connecting with God. He can take a silly, young, shy kid, and if we say yes to God and we step into the hard place, he'll give you the words to say. He'll change lives. How many feel inadequate for the call of God in your life? Just raise your hand. Well, then you probably heard God correctly. God always takes people that are inadequate and he wants to glorify Jesus Christ. That's why he picks you to do the hard thing. Is because when you're successful at it, you have one place to point the glory to and that's to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Oh, I need to hurry. You guys okay? All right, let me give you a couple last thoughts here. Kelly Clark. I liked in her speech to the, to the uh, leadership that she spoke to, uh, she said this. She said this. She quoted Paul Manwarning, and she said this. False humility is great for one thing, to keep you average. You guys Okay. False humility is great for one thing, to keep you average. See, the devil wants to paralyze you with fear. He wants to fill you with questions. He wants you to doubt yourself, and he never wants you to change the world. 
He doesn't want you to be a Kelly Clark that goes on TV. The whole world knows her testimony and her story. CNN can't shut it down. This is a paradigm shift for some of us. We must know that God is with us in this journey. And once you've conquered that thought and you know that he's with you, then you become unstoppable. Even if you're afraid. Most of the things I've done, I've done them afraid. I spoke on a panel, I think it was, for the, it was in Chicago one time when I was in business. They asked us to speak before the panel, I think it was the World Bank, and it was, uh, they were exploring technology, and the technology, technology section of the American economy. And I was part of the panelist board, and I was scared to death in Chicago. Me! I got up there, and the Holy Spirit, I don't know, it was crazy. I started having fun, and I was so nervous. As soon as I got up there, every time they'd ask me a question, I'd give a witty answer, and the place would laugh. And I got all done, and I got down off that panel, and it came down, and there's hundreds and hundreds, probably a thousand, two thousand people there. And people were like patting me on the back. Oh, that was so good. Thank you for coming, you know. And I thought, you have no idea. I'm just from Cameron. <laughs> this is a paradigm shift that we have to come to. God hasn't called any one of us to be average. If you're a drummer, you need to be the best. If, you're, if you play the bassoon, God has called you to play the best bassoon. He's called you to do that. He's called us to be excellent in what he's called us to, to do. I like what Martin Luther King Jr. said. I'm going to butcher this. But he said, if you can only be a street sweeper, then let the world see you as the best street sweeper ever. See, we glorify God and know that he's with us to fulfill our purpose. Are you guys okay? I'm trying to open up something in your life. Proverbs 13 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. When we start looking at all our weaknesses, we'll never come into God's fulfillment. But when we start looking at God's greatness and the things we can change and t steps of faith we can make, we will come into greatness. Is anybody alive? See, you need to have living faith in you because only living things produce, produce fruit. We need to shake ourselves out of this lethargic thing to think that God is with other people, but he's not big enough to see me where I'm at today. Faith says yes. Faith says I'm going to make the hard step. Faith says I'm going to invite people to my cell group. Amen? Faith says I'm going to put myself in the awkward position to let God's glory come even when I don't know what to do. Amen? God's provision is in the calling. How many can agree with that? So, Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift makes room for himself and puts him before great men. I've had beautiful opportunities. Many of you guys have had beautiful opportunities. Ones that I knew that were way above my pay grade. But somehow or another, I foolishly said, yes, God put me in the position. And when I got up there, God worked a miracle, and the whole time that I'm speaking, I'm like, I'm not speaking this. God is speaking this. This is cool. And I get done, and I go home, and the Lord says to me, thank you for being obedient. How many want to say yes to God? How many want to say yes to God? How many want to say yes to God? Let's try this again. How many want to say yes to God? Yes. Amen. Thank you. I'd like you to stand up. Has this challenged you at all? Has this challenged you at all? Every one of us have a calling from God. Every one of us. Every one of us. Everyone in here has a call from God. And they're all different. Some of you have businesses. You're like Dan back here, cutting trees for a living and 
He employs people and God looks at that and he's like, that's, that's a good job to provide for your family, but I've actually given you a platform to speak to the county. Amen? Just to be a light. Some of us drive school bus. I drove school bus in college. I wouldn't hire a college kid to do that. <laughs> Had like two hours of sleep every night. Huge coffee. Well, you drink that huge coffee and it does something to you in like 20 minutes. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of kids on those routes. But God, no matter where he's placed you, he's placed you there to be a light, to be an influence, to change the world. And if we'll see it that way, and we'll start saying, God, there's provision for my calling. I need to show up and do the best I can, but you'll show up and do the best you can through me. It takes the pressure off, amen? So I want to pray for you. I'm going to do a general prayer, but then afterwards, if you want special prayer, we're going to have a team up here to pray for you. Because some of you have come up against a fence in your life. Maybe it's a bad relationship that left you wounded, and you're like, I can't get over this hurdle. Maybe you've stepped out before and you got hurt. And if there's something blocking you and you just can't get through that wall to start shining in your calling, we're going to have special prayer for you because I want to see every single one of us come into excellence. God never called any of us to be mediocre. Amen? And I want to pray that fear would leave and in this church we will see authors spring up we will see songwriters spring up, recording artists, lawyers, doctors, people that never thought they could do things, even thought they were too old to do things, will start changing their world because they said once again, yes to God. Close your eyes if you would. I want to give you a word from Almighty God, the same God that created the world, the same God that came as a man and rose again, the same God that sent the Holy Spirit, empowered people, called people. I want to say this, that every one of you are called. And God himself commits through his word to give you provision for that calling. And if you say yes to God, you'll start living the most exciting, fulfilling life that you've ever dreamt of. Amen? I want to encourage you. Keep your eyes closed. God's going to speak to you right now. And he's going to reaffirm what he's called you to do in this season or for your lifetime. There it is. And what he's waiting for is not a bunch of fear, not a bunch of excuses. He's saying he wants you to not worry about those hurdles. We'll work on those. But he's waiting for you to come into alignment like Mary and say yes. He's waiting for you to trust him like Joseph, that even though he went through some life-crushing moments, Joseph all the way said yes and became second in charge over Egypt. There it is. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to every heart. I ask that you would challenge every person. I ask that you would unleash their gifts again. I pray that they would be songwriters, businessmen, teachers, scholars, whatever. I pray that they would do the impossible and shock the world because God touched you and released a gift on your life. And we said yes to him. <laughs> I'd like you to just raise your hand with your eyes closed. If you want to say yes to God, to your personal calling, I'd like you to raise your hand. Ha. <laughs> You want to say yes to God for your personal calling. I believe he spoke to you already what it is. Maybe it's just to be a light. Then be the best light. Father God, I pray that you would open faith right now. I pray that you'd heal disappointments and discouragements. I pray that offenses would be gone and forgiven. I pray that this body would come into a powerful move of God. I pray that they would come into the yes of God and the amen from us. 
to you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody said, Amen. If you want special prayer, I want to have you come forward. We're going to have a team up here. If you're on the ministry team, why don't you just guys come up? And if you feel like there's a hurdle that you need to cross, I want you to just come up. Otherwise, God bless you. I want you to hug at least two people. Start your car. Let it warm up. And have a great night. Amen? We love you. God bless you. Amen.